The Spirit of Youth and the City Streets by Jane Addams lends a voice to the concerns about the effects of urbanization on young people at the turn of the 20th century. Adams, a pioneer in social reform and a co-founder of Chicago's Hull House, presents a poignant critique of how cities neglect youth, especially those from less privileged backgrounds. Adams begins by capturing the natural zest and vigor of young people, inherently driven by a spirit of adventure and desire for experiences. She is distressed that cities fail to accommodate these impulses in a constructive manner. The street becomes the only outlet for this pent-up energy. This environment, often associated with vice and delinquency, is not conducive to youth's positive development. She addresses the contradiction in society's expectations. While young people are asked to be good, the city offers temptation and opportunities for wrongdoing at every corner. She continues by emphasizing the importance of recognizing youth, not merely as troublesome, but with the potential for contributing positively to society. Young people's aspirations and moral impulses should be channeled into community involvement and improved social conditions, instead of being stigmatized as rebellious or frivolous. Adams is critical of parents and elder members of the community who, she observes, tend to dismiss the ideas and passions of the younger generation as unimportant, neglecting the understanding that such passions could be directed towards social and civic improvement. The author addresses the problems associated with boys and young men who engage in aggressive behaviors and gang affiliations, which she attributes to their need for excitement and recognition. Rather than condemning these youths, Adams suggests that their behaviors are extensions of normal development, simply magnified and twisted by the urban setting. She calls for more social opportunities, where young men can manifest their strength and leadership in constructive ways. For young women, the challenges are different, yet equally concerning. Adams outlines the allure of city life for girls, which often results in them being drawn into perilous situations. She highlights the limited, uninspiring opportunities available to them for leisure and work. Adams points out that young women seek outlets in department stores and dance halls, seeking something that brightens their drab lives. This search for glamour, spurred by billboard and magazine imagery, presents risks, as many girls are naive to the dangers hidden in the city's bright lights. Adams underscores the disconnect between the education system and the needs of urban youth. She notes that schools are frequently dull and detached from the realities of students' lives. She calls for education to be more attentive to the individual, promoting a deeper understanding of one's relationship to society. In particular, she emphasizes the necessity of providing vocational training that is both practical and engaging to prevent young people from dropping out and turning to the streets for education. The book proceeds to argue for the importance of play and recreation as vital to youth development. Adams calls for the creation of spaces and opportunities for young people to engage in sports, art, and leisure activities. She sees the establishment of parks, playgrounds, and community centers, as well as the organization of structured activities, as pivotal in offering a positive counterbalance to the disarray of the streets. Moreover, Adams discusses the institutional responses to wayward youth, critiquing the juvenile justice system, which often failed to rehabilitate and instead perpetuated a cycle of incarceration and crime. She advocates for approaches grounded in understanding and support rather than punishment to help reintegrate troubled youth into society. In the latter part of the text, Adams calls for social responsibility and action. She insists that it is the duty of the community to provide safe and enriching environments for its youth and stresses the necessity for both private and public support in this endeavor. She envisions a society that rallies behind its young people, offering them the guidance and resources required for healthy development. She also introduces various Hull House initiatives as examples of successful responses to youth's needs in the city. These include clubs, educational programs, theaters, and an assortment of cultural activities designed to appeal to the different interests and backgrounds of young people. Adams does not shy away from addressing the responsibilities of the commercial sectors, which often exploit youth's desires for profit. 
She insists that businesses should not be allowed to sacrifice the well-being of young people through the sale of alcohol or the promotion of gambling, and that they should instead contribute positively to the lives of the community's younger members. Finally, Adams returns to her essential theme. The spirit of youth is precious, powerful, and fundamentally a source of societal good if acknowledged and fostered correctly. She concludes that the city, with its complex dynamics, presents challenges but also offers incredible opportunities to uplift young people. Through reforms, community engagement, and the creation of protective and affirming spaces, she proposes that young people can become civic-minded adults who contribute to a democracy that is dynamic and progressive. The spirit of youth and the city streets serves as a clarion call for society to recognize its duties to the next generation. Jane Addams presents a compassionate, yet critical analysis of urban life's impact on youth and outlines a vision of reform and involvement aimed at harnessing the energy and aspirations of young people for the betterment of society.